untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Jeskai Colored combo deck titled Elder Experiment and it's voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the goal of the deck is to cheat Velomachus Lorehold and to play the 7 mana 5 5 legendary Elder Dragon with Flying, Vigilance, and Haste. And whenever Velomachus attacks, we get to look at the top 7 cards of our library and then cast an instant or sorcery spell with mana value less than or equal to Velomachus's power from among them without paying its mana cost. So the card we most want to find with Velomachus, of course, is going to be Time Warp, the 5 mana sorcery that lets us take an extra turn after this one. So how are we going to cheat Velomachus into play? Well, it's going to be using these Transmogrify effects, and we've got Transmogrify itself here, the 4 mana sorcery that exiles target creature, and that creature's controller reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card and put it onto the battlefield. So we're going to be targeting one of our creature tokens with Transmogrify, and the only actual creature in the deck is Velomachus. Macus, so we're guaranteed to find it with our Transmogrify. And then we also have four copies of Indomitable Creativity, which has a very similar effect but can also target artifacts to find a creature or artifact in our deck. So we can even target our treasure tokens that we generate with cards like Prismari Command, which can also then find our Velomachus. And then hopefully we can chain together some time warps, even have experimental overload to get time warp back from our graveyard. And it also generates a token in the first place, so we can target it with Transmogrify or Creativity. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck at one mana. We've got a full play set of Brainstorm to draw three and then put two cards from our hand on the top of our library. Can be great in combination with our Fabled Passage to shuffle away cards we don't need. Can potentially shuffle away our Velomachus so we can find it with Creativity or Transmogrify once again. But can also be very good if we already have Velomachus in play just so we can put a Time Warp on top of our deck and then hit it with Velomachus. So we can essentially cast a Time Warp for one mana instead of having to pay five mana for it. Then at 2 mana we have a bit of interaction with the full playset of Unsubstantiate, which can be used as a bounce spell for opposing creatures, but also as a temporary counter spell, so it can maybe counter an opposing counter spell to make sure we can resolve our Transmogrifier creativity in a lengthier control game, but can also just be used to delay the opponent's game plan to buy ourselves enough time to set up our combo. And then we also have two copies of Fire Prophecy, which can deal 3 damage to target creature, and then we can put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library, and if we do draw a card, so that's an way of putting Velomachus back into our deck if we happen to draw it. Then at 3 mana we have the full playset of Prismari Command, which is a very versatile card. We get to choose two modes between dealing 2 damage to any target, giving us some creature removal. We get to draw 2 and then discard 2, which can be great for card filtering. We get to make a treasure token, which can help us ramp or give us a target for indomitable creativity. And we can also destroy target artifact, so a lot of different modes to choose from. Then of course we have Creativity and Transmogrify, which we're planning to cast around turn 4 to start comboing off. And then Experimental Overload can be great as just a value card to get back an instant or sorcery from our graveyard and generate a large weird token, but of course can also get back our Time Warp to chain together a lot of extra turns to win on the spot. Then we've got our four copies of Time Warp, and finally the full playset of Shark Typhoon as another way to generate a creature token without actually being a creature, just by cycling this for x equals one or more to generate a shark creature token. And then in a very grindy game, of course, we could also hard cast it for six mana and then start generating even more sharks. And then the mana base also includes four copies of a Dwarven Mine. This is actually pretty important too, as it can generate a 1-1 red dwarf creature token if we controlled three or more mountains when Dwarven Mine came into play, in which case it also comes into play untapped. And then the mana base to accommodate a Dwarven Mine needs to have plenty of mountains, so we only have the one actual island to fetch up with Fabled Passage, and then we have some of these triomes that are both islands and mountains, with four copies of Rogrin Triome, which can potentially also help us hard cast Velomachus thanks to the white mana. Mana, then two copies of Ketra Triome, and then the full playset of Steam Vents, which counts as Island and Mountain, and can be played untapped, and then five actual mountains and four Dwarven Mines. And then, of course, the four Fabled Passages, also very good with Brainstorm, as we mentioned. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand is missing Transmogrifier Creativity. We do have a bit of card selection with Brainstorm and Prismari Commands. Is that enough for me to keep? I think so. Don't really want to brainstorm right away. The rest can have a look. So that would have taken one of our transmogrify effects anyway. 
takes Brainstorm. And then I might have to play the Dwarven Mind Tapped, so we're guaranteed to Prismatic Command on 3 at least. Does mean shields down on Unsubstantiate, but it's not great against 1 mana discard spells anyway. So opponent Red Black Control. And I'm probably just gonna discard Unsubstantiate here. Alright, Overload's gonna be good. So we can pass with Command. Another Duress resolves. Probably takes Overload. And then... Definitely gonna make a Treasure and then probably draw to discard too. And then best case scenario we find a land and a creativity. Dwarven Mine can also make a token. Discard and substantiate and maybe time warp since we don't have double blue. So now both Transmogrify and Creativity are alive with the Dwarven Mine making a dwarf token. Although the opponent could be keeping up some instant speed removal. Shark Typhoon isn't bad, can make a 2-2 Shark, so we can start applying a bit of pressure. Opponent did have the Shock, so they would have been able to respond to Transmogrify or Creativity. Although Creativity on the Treasure token would have been safe. So that's definitely the better of the two cards we can find. Arcanist shows up. And a Stitcher Supplier to fill the Graveyard. And finds more copies of Croxa, although their opponent's missing double black. So let's Typhoon for two. Could also Typhoon for three, give up my treasure so we have a blocker for Arcanists. And so they cannot shock my shark. Might be better here actually. And then we'll still have a target for Transmogrify or Creativity. All right, I think we gotta try and find one now. And did not get there, but we did find a Fabled Passage at least. So we can shuffle our two lands back. And then we'll keep the Shark on defense. Could have also tried to hide my Prismari commands, so that Arcanist cannot find it with Duress. It's gonna be a Valky. That's fine. So now if the Arcanists back the duress, we just cast command, killing Valky. Stitcher Supplier attacks. Can probably take one. So we get to shuffle. And then... Definitely gonna draw to discard too. Question is whether or not we make a treasure or kill Valky. Valky doesn't matter too much here, so I th think I like making a treasure. Find Brainstorm and Creativity, so both are good, but I've got to keep Creativity. And then we can target our treasure, which will be safe. Find Velomachus, attack, and hopefully find a time warp, although Overload gets back time warp, also decent. Could also get back another Overload, but our opponent's just gonna pack it in. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? Only two lands, no real card filtering. We do have... Typhoon and Overload to make a token for creativity, but this hand feels a bit too clunky. Is this better? It's not perfect, but I think we keep. And then... Probably get rid of one Brainstorm. And then we have to find one of our... Transmogrify or creativity for this hand to function. 
Don't know yet if I want to brainstorm right away. Think I'll wait until my turn. Alright, Fabled Passage makes brainstorming a little bit more effective. Alright, there's Creativity, so I can ditch Mountain. Mountain, fetch with Fabled Passage, next turn Dwarven Mine gives us target for Creativity. Seems fine. Although, drawing the mountain is also not terrible. It's just that if something goes wrong, I would rather have more draws towards another creativity or transmogrify. Opponent taps out for Psy. Now, we do have two time warps in hand, so we're not super likely to find additional copies with Velomachus. Alright, opponent is making a few Thopters here with all these free cards and a Mox Amber, which generates one mana, so they could technically have a Counterspell still. We'll fetch a Mountain. And then Dwarven Mine makes a Dwarf, which we can then target, and then we'll have to get pretty lucky to win on the spot but it's not impossible. The flying blockers make that a bit more difficult as well, I guess. All right, creativity resolves at least. Finds Velomachus. If we find one time warp, we can chain together two more. And we did not, but we did find Overload, Prophecy, Brainstorm. Let's go with Overload. And get back, maybe brainstorm. Opponent takes it, so let's see what they can do here. Gonna start by floating mana with Mox Amber. This could be a paradoxical outcome deck as well. Opponent gonna start by drawing cards. So they might have another Mox Amber in hand. Makes another Thopter. That's fine. Inspiring Statuary. Now that's a dangerous card. So their non artifact spells have Improvise, but. I guess her opponent only had single blue mana. Alright, so Brainstorm guarantees that I hit Time Warp, although I won't be able to spend my mana on much else. I guess we can make a Shark Token, a 2-2 Shark Token. Or I can just, you know, Time Warp and then hopefully hit another Time Warp with Velmachus. I do want to Time Warp first in case we hit Experimental Overload, so there's a Time Warp in the graveyard at least. So we'll start here. That resolves. And then, probably no point in sending the 2-2. We did hit another Time Warp. So we have two extra turns lined up. Opponent's already going to start jumping. And then... This turn I could hard cast Shark Typhoon. Since we have another extra turn, that way we start making some more sharks. Attack with Velmachus. And hit Overload to get back Time Warp. So we're definitely going off here. Yeah, if our opponent had one more Thopter, they could have tried to trade for Velmachus, but things didn't quite line up for them. So I have to take an extra turn. That resolves. Shark can start attacking. And I guess these can all attack now. And we hit another time warp. And that's gonna seal the deal. Had another time warp lined up too. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. 
command can make a treasure token to target with creativity and we've got a dwarven mine which we can maybe use to generate a token as well and then we'll fetch a mountain with fabled passage just to get that out of the way and then hopefully we draw land so we can keep the dwarven mine until turn four if not i'll probably play tapped turn two so we can turn three command and then turn four creativity opponents with an opt so blue red they might have some counter spells we'll see found a brainstorm which is not super useful right now although it can help me hit my land drop so we have a few approaches if brainstorm draws into a mountain then we can set up command into dwarven mine which also makes a dwarf token which might be the play so close call here could also just play tap dwarven mine with a plan of commanding and then we're somewhat likely to draw into a land with those extra draws and then making a treasure we can target with creativity so we don't really need the dwarf token which is susceptible to removal anyway Goblin Electromancer, I also don't mind killing with commands. So that might be the priority. And then... I don't get to make my treasure token for creativity, or I don't get to draw. Probably better off still making the treasure, since that's less replaceable than just drawing a land. So... Kill Electromancer, and make a treasure. And then if we find an untapped land, we get to creativity, the treasure into a Velomachus. If not, we can maybe go digging for a land with Brainstorm. All right, perfect. Our opponent does have three mana up, so they could easily have interaction. So I could wait until I have Unsubstantiate available. Now, creativity doesn't, you know, require the artifact to be destroyed as part of the costs. So if they counter creativity, I'll still have my treasure token for the second creativity. So I think we still go for creativity x equals one here. And then if they counter this, we'll maybe take it slow, but resolves instantly. Thelmac is in play, gets to attack, and does not find time warp, but does find overload, which gets back probably Prismari command. And then next turn we can cast Brainstorm to put Time Warp on top to hit it with Velomachus. And then maybe even cast Overload to get Time Warp back. So let's see if they can answer Velomachus. If they do, we still have creativity on our token to get a second one. So we're in a pretty good position, but maybe our opponents will combo deck themselves and they can just combo off here. It's going to be Pirate's Pillage, discarding Mind's Desires. Our opponent's also trying to do some powerful things here. Play Steam Vents tapped. We drew with the other Velmachus, which is not ideal, but we can shuffle it away with Brainstorm. So that's the plan here. Put back Velmachus Time Warp. And then we get to attack, cast a Time Warp for free. And get it back with our Overload to then cast it again next turn. And that should pretty much wrap things up. And we found another Brainstorm, but it's not really necessary. Still had Unsubstantiate as backup in case of any shenanigans. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We'll need our Dwarf token to survive to set up our Transmogrify. Although we can potentially make a token with Overload as well. And our opponent might be playing a similar deck. Or maybe just Jeskai Control. Uh, here I have to decide if we keep up Unsubstantiate or if we play Tap the Dwarven Mind so we can Command on 3. I think we keep up Unsubstantiate since I'm probably gonna need my Mind to make a Dwarf Token. 
expressive iteration. I don't mind countering just to delay them. Alright, perfect. So now if they tap out for expressive iteration, we get to go Dwarven Mine, make a token, transmogrify, and hopefully combo off. If they can keep up a lightning helix, then we'll have to take a different approach. Opponent finds Castle Ardenville, so I don't think they'll have any interaction up here. There's Velmachus. Can we hit a time warp? We can. Alright, so we're off to the races. And another Dwarven Mine's perfect. Let's just cast time warp. And hit overload, get back time warp. And that should seal the deal here. All right, sweet. Blink and you miss it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand is a bit light on lands, and we don't have creativity or transmogrify, so probably a mulligan. This hand is not ideal, but probably keepable. Can put Velmachus back. We can hopefully make a shark and then transmogrify it. Facing a life gain deck. So. Would like to draw an untapped land or two. And if our opponent can make some large flyers that can profitably block Velomachus, we could also be in trouble. Dwarven Mine gives us another thing to potentially transmogrify. They've got the Righteous Valkyrie. So the plan here is probably going to be to unsubstantiate end of turn, next turn Dwarven Mine, and hopefully combo off. And then we just need to make sure that our opponent doesn't have 5 power of flyers on defense, so I think I take 5. Opponent passes, I guess we'll bounce the Valkyrie. Opponent may have been playing around a sweeper effect. Don't expect him to have much at instant speed. And then we gotta grab a mountain here. So we turn on our dwarven mine. Alright, let's hope for the best. Opponent will gain one more. And then gonna hope for a time warp. No time warp. We did hit another unsubstantiate. So we'll bounce the youthful Valkyrie, get rid of more flying creatures. And then we're somewhat likely to be able to attack a second time next turn. Especially with some removal spells in hand. Alright, so we'll start by attacking here and take it from there. There's time warp. And now we can overload, get back time warp. We didn't have land 5 yet, but we were definitely in good shape and our opponent packs it in. A little bit premature, but definitely understandable. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. We're looking at a turn 3 cycle Shark Typhoon. Turn 2 we can even unsubstantiate and then hopefully turn 4 transmogrify. Turn 1 Ladder Elves. So, could bounce the Elves itself, could bounce whatever they cast. I guess we'll keep up our unsubstantiate and wait and see what the opponent does. Blue green. And a Grow Spiral. Sure. Opponent keeps up two mana. 
We'll bounce the elf here, I think. Slow them down just a little bit. Since we want to be able to cycle Shark Typhoon. Now, it is a little awkward that we drew both Dwarven Mines. Since now, I'm not guaranteed an untapped fourth land. Since we don't have Triple Mountain in play. But Typhoon draws a card, so we've got two draw steps to find an untapped land here. Opponent keeps up four mana. So they might be holding on to some interaction. Prophecy and Time Warp, so it did not get there. The next turn we'll get a backup dwarf and we have Fire Prophecy for the elf, put in pass with four mana. So they might be sitting on a counter spell that they didn't use. Well, at least we're pressuring them. A little by little, so it's probably not prudent to go for the combo here. Now I could creativity for X equals two, but I don't think that plays around any particular interaction from our opponent, like a counter spell or a bounce spell, since they can just bounce Velomachus itself. So yeah, I think we just hit for one and then take it slow. We are the ones pressuring the opponents. So unless they've got a one turn combo to kill us out of nowhere, we should be okay. The elf we can kill. And then we'll put probably Transmogrify on the bottom. Prismari commands useful. We'll keep up our Prismari command at instant speed. Opponent goes for Paradise Druids. We will make a treasure and then draw to discard two. Alright, Frill Mystic to counter it, so opponent took our bait. And now we can creativity and we even have mana to brainstorm. So that way we can put a time warp on top, which guarantees that we hit it with Velomachus. And we'll keep another Time Warp in hand. And I want the blue mana to cast Time Warp. And our opponent concedes. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Now the mana is going to be a little bit awkward. I think I start by fetching an island so we can cycle Typhoon on turn 2 potentially. And then Prismari Command can try to make a treasure token. Could also play Dwarven Mine tapped on 2 and then Command on 3. And then we'll need to find another red source for creativity, which will work just as fine. Opponent on a Gates deck. So they shouldn't have too much instant speed interaction for us. Yeah, let's just play a timed mine and then turn three commands, draw to discard to make a treasure. And if we draw an untapped land, we're off to the races. Opponent taps out for Guild Summit. Could be their last play of the game. If all things go according to plan. There's my land, time warp's good to have. And then I guess we'll keep one backup transmogrify effect and probably don't need Shark Typhoon. And now, yeah, we don't have the luxury of going for creativity and casting brainstorm to guarantee time warp on top. 
but uh, creativity on the treasure token still pretty solid here. And hope to hit a time warp, which we did. And unlikely that we fizzle out here, looking at our hand with another time warp overload to get back time warp and brainstorm to put it on top of our deck onto the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and this hand is fine. We've got Dwarven Mine and uh, Overload to potentially make tokens for creativity. Not ideal that we have Philomachus in hand, although if we draw Brainstorm, we can shuffle it away with Fabled Passage. Do need to draw an untapped land, ideally. Put on black green with explore. So I guess we'll get one dwarven mine out of the way. Cultivates or points ramping. Could be who knows a bolus a citadel deck maybe. Alright, so next turn we're looking at Dwarven Mine into Creativity. Another Cultivate, opponent's going real big. And we've got to hope they don't have any instant speed removal for our Dwarf token. Have to fetch a Mountain. Get our second Velomachus. Attack. And hit a time warp. So that's at least 10 damage. And we've got another time warp in hand, so that should seal the deal. Especially with more chances of hitting overload. Guess we'll brainstorm. And then doesn't matter too much here. Can overload, get back, time warp, put it back with brainstorm. And that way we're guaranteed to find it with our Velomachus. And then we can attack for 9. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This sounds fine. Could use one more untapped lands so we can cycle Typhoon on 3, Transmogrify on 4. Since command's not gonna be good enough. Unsubstantiate gives us a bit of extra interaction. But yeah, most of our lands coming into play tapped is the constraining factor, opponent on an aggressive, red-white, maybe burn deck. Faithless looting. So maybe less of a burn deck and more of just a magecraft aggro deck. Double Ryle discarded, could be a feather deck I suppose. Play another tap land. And then next turn I might keep up Prismari Command or we might go for the Cycle Shark Typhoon. So we've got a token for Transmogrify, although Dwarven Mine will also do the job. So we can maybe use Prismari Command for interaction. Warlord's Fury, Pumps Lumenancer. So probably not a Feather deck then with Warlord's Fury. Show of Confidence, alright. That hits pretty hard. So I could just keep up Unsubstantiate to bounce the Lumomancer, play tapped Steam Vents, and then next turn Dwarven Mine sets up Transmogrify just fine. That's probably the safest play. Opponent might go for a lethal attack, and we get to punish them. Although if they have a God's Willing, we are the ones getting punished. So I'll take two. Alright, another Lumomancer. Put him down to one card in hand. 
I'll take the two, I think. Although I could unsubstantiate now. If their last card is a shock, then we get punished for the opponent killing our dwarf. Whereas if we bounce the Lumomancer now, they might just replay it and be tapped out. And if it's a God's Willing, we know that they don't have a shock in hand. Uh, it was a God's Willing. So, we really want to hit a time warp now, since we might be dead on the way back if we don't. Alright, there's a time warp. And then now at the very least I've got an extra token and interaction available. So we'll attack, hit, overload, get back, my time warp, and then we can cast it. Alright, so do I want to cast anything? I could hard cast Shark Typhoon, always fun, although if we hit another experimental overload, I would rather be able to cast another time warp. I could brainstorm first, and then we can still overload time warp. And then probably don't need all the shark typhoons. Or I could guarantee hitting a prismari command at least. Sure. And then the weird probably stays home for now. Although it is a must block. Yeah, I guess we can do this and then Prismari Command can also just go upstairs. And that should seal the deal too. And then we'll make a treasure. And a second Prismari Command is game. So I guess we had guaranteed lethal by just putting back command. Oh well, sometimes you get too carried away with taking extra turns. Alright, sweet. So yeah, this uh, Elder Experiment deck definitely delivered. And we won quite a few games on turn 4, so... Historic has been a turn 4 combo format pretty much since they introduced Jumpstart, so if you're playing a combo deck, the deck has to be capable of winning on turn 4, otherwise it's probably not good enough. So better have some interaction if you're planning to go long. But it is relatively easy to disrupt this deck if you've got some cheap spot removal, think Shock, Fatal Push, anything cheap to destroy a token, then you can blow up the token in response to transmogrify or creativity. Of course it becomes much more difficult if we have creativity to target a treasure token because there's not too much instant speed interaction for artifacts although cards like a braid come to mind. So there's no shortage of interaction for this combo deck but if we're up against other creature or combo decks that plan to win early then we can often get there by turn four so that makes our deck a force to be reckoned with. So yeah that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.